Sustainability in tech, building consumer loyalty and the rise of the fringe consumer. That and more on today's episode. Want to know what's next? For over two decades, we've led the world's most influential brands to create the right products at the right time for tomorrow's consumer. This is WGSN's Client Questions Answered. Hello, and welcome to the show where our experts from around the globe unpack your biggest challenges. I'm Carla Bazarshi, President and CEO at WGSN. Let's get started. Our first question comes from a tech client asking, Sustainability is an ongoing conversation across our teams. What is one action a tech company could take now to be more sustainable? For this, we're heading over to San Francisco to hear from Lisa Yong, our Director of Consumer Tech. Over to you, Lisa. That's a great question. First of all, tech brands should really listen to what their customers want and start recalibrating their business priorities to benefit people and the planet over profit. Consumers desire to reduce their environmental footprint, and they expect brands that they support to take more proactive actions on the climate crisis. Knowing that, companies need to put in the work to advocate real change by making sustainability part of their brand DNA from the ground up. That means aligning company-wide goals on ESG initiatives and making sure that everyone is on board with the same vision. They also need to hire the right sustainability expertise to guide them on how to implement eco-positive systems into their business. For companies that make products, design can play a significant role in driving change early on in the process. Think in terms of designing for disassembly and product longevity. Use circular materials, include energy saving solutions and minimize e-waste through repair and recycle capabilities. Fab, thank you Lisa for that overview. If you'd like to find out more on this topic, our consumer tech team has developed a key trend report on circular product design, which includes some great examples of best practice. Our next question comes from a client asking, Asia is our most diverse and fragmented market. How can we understand consumers at a cultural level and build long-term loyalty across the region? Another great question. Let's head over to Hong Kong to hear from Adrian, who's our senior strategist lead for Mindset. Well, it really comes down to knowing your customers and engaging with them at a very local and personal level. Um, we developed a series of Culture Pulse programs for this particular challenge, where company brands understanding cultural overlap, differences, specificities, and inform engagement strategies through ethnographic studies, understanding usability, preferences, or unmet desires. In-house network of field experts who look at established movement, but also emerging subcultures or quantitative study via survey or social to spot emerging topics, inform innovation, tone of voice or positioning. No matter the approach, really, local relevance is a key to succeed in this highly fragmented region. Amazing. Thank you, Adrian, for your insight. Our final question for today comes from a client asking, how is the future of consumer segmentation changing with the rise of fringe generations? Giving us their take on this topic is Cassandra Napoli, our Senior Strategist for Insight, based in New York. Over to you, Cassandra. Now, in a time of tech acceleration and rapid innovation, 15 years may no longer be adequate when it comes down to generational labeling. With the fast moving nature of the world, it's really hard to justify that someone born at the start and at the tail end of the same generation will share the same behaviors and attitudes, especially when the circumstances of the world that they grew up in, as well as their relationship with technology is so different. It's understood that the truest definition of a generation is found in those born at the very center of the 15 year span. But the cusp cohorts operating on the fringes, so that's Xennials born between Gen X and Millennials, Xennials born between Millennials and Gen Z, and Zalphas born between Gen Z and Alphas, can really help brands understand the disparity within the group as well as the link between two generations. Fab, thank you, Cassandra. You can navigate our Insight Vertical by generation to find deep dives into each market. So whether you're interested in Gen X or Alphas, we've got you covered. That's it for this week. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like answered, please pop them in the comments box for our team. I'm Carla Bazashi, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.